Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Blue Note here in New York City. Tonight, McCoy Tyner is celebrating the 50th anniversary of the monumental John Coltrane and Johnny Hartman recording off Impulse Records from 1963. It was the first and only time the saxophonist was paired with the vocalist, as well as the first of three ballad records that he recorded with Impulse Records. Tonight, McCoy Tyner is celebrating with the likes of vocalist Jose James, as well as tenor saxophonist Eric Alexander. the 50th anniversary of John Coltrane and Johnny Hartman and you were part of that monumental quartet tell me what that album means now in 2011 now that you've decided to revisit it with Jose James well it's, it was beautiful when I had the opportunity actually to uh, record uh, with Johnny and uh, Coltrane and he was a great uh, ballad player himself I mean he accompanying uh, uh, Johnny was really a great uh, thrill because I had done that in the past, but that was really a monumental opportunity. As the recording session took place, what were some of the things or the nuances that you noticed between the chemistry between Johnny Hartman and John Coltrane? Well, I think John had had some experience uh, probably playing with some big bands and various uh, uh, musical settings and playing with, with vocalists in the past because he they worked very well together I think he knew Johnny Harvard pretty well from past experience you know I mean I didn't know the history uh, itself because I was so young at the time and I wasn't around when when they, were, they had probably played together you know but uh, it was just a, an exciting experience for me uh, to be part of that project Jose being part of the next generation of jazz vocalists, what does Johnny Hartman's legacy as far as his stylings and as well as being a baritone, what, what, what does that mean right now in 2011? Well, I think um, for me, I mean, there's a long lineage of, uh, you know, black American vocalists. You're talking about Nat Cole, you're talking about Billy Eckstein, Johnny Hartman, uh, and all of these, um, you know, vocalists obviously come from Louis Armstrong and, and influenced, you know, Ray Charles, who then went on to influence, 
everybody we're dealing with today, D'Angelo and and all the the great singers of today. So for me, it's it's a continuum, and it's very important to honor our forefathers in that way. Um, see what they, the beauty that they made out of the the difficult lives that they led. Playing with McCoy now, what has that done to you as far as interpreting those six songs on this album? Because this album is was only recorded in one take, except the exception of one song, and it's only under thirty minutes long. Well, I mean, first I just like to say it's a huge honor working with McCoy, and um, it's it's a it's a great challenge, you know. I mean, like he likes to say. When he was young, he got a great opportunity to work and go to school. So I would say McCoy's bringing me to school on this project. Yeah, <laughs> I hope I hope I graduate. honors. <laughs> <laughs> so straight straightforward and and the lyrics are so pure and beautiful melodies are so wonderful that's that's timeless that'll always resonate I think the other reason why the record and I mean this sincerely the record stands the test of time and is so great the the accompaniments of Mr. Tyner are so lush and pristine and um, it's like a magic carpet ride anything that the rest of the musicians do is really bolstered by what he played on that record. I think he makes the record, in my opinion. And uh, that's why it's so special to be a part of the project now, because you're getting another version of his genius each night. It's different, but it's equally good, and it's incredible. when you recorded this you went to um, Rudy Van Gelder's studio tell me about the atmosphere at the time when you guys went into the studio because 
Rudy Van Gelder, when he was inducted as a jazz master, he said this was one of the greatest albums that he had the privilege of recording and actually being a part of. Well, he was amazing because uh, he he also, uh, when I did uh, my first albums for Impulse, he, he recorded uh, my, my Inception album I did. And uh, he... Uh, he was a very stern kind of person. He liked people, you know, hanging around in the studio room, the natural uh, place where he sat and did all his engineering and everything like that. But he was, uh, you know, he was very conscious, and I think he loved the music, you know, in his way. You know, I think he's one of the greatest uh, engineers that we've ever had who has recorded this music. So this was really special because I think John wanted to do this, and... Uh, Johnny Hoffman, and I think they had had previous experiences of uh, working together in big band or something like that. I don't know which one, but uh, I, I had a, I had a ball. I really did. I really enjoyed it. Did you ever think in a million years when you recorded this that it would stand the test of time, like all of the music that you guys recorded as a unit? Yeah, well, quality is. Is a lasting thing. If you do something halfway, then it's going to reflect that. I don't care when you come back to it, whether it's 10 years, 15 years, 20 years later. But when you do something that's monumental and something of quality, it's going to be around for a while. And I'm very, very proud to have been on this project. And uh, it's been fun. And uh, and, uh, the fact that uh, we're we're revisiting uh, the, the music. It's really making me feel very good. It brings back some great memories. Jose, when you're singing these songs on the bandstand with Eric Alexander, and Eric is playing the part, we're, 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 we're acting now, <laughs> and he's playing the part of John Coltrane, and you're playing the part of Johnny Hartman, do you feel that you have really, really grown into these songs? Well, when we first talked about doing the project, I mean, that's, for me, that's my number one male vocal jazz album of all time. I mean, I listened to it since I was, you know, 14 years old. Uh, so that's been a little while. And I don't, I don't, I think for me and Eric, we don't look at it as stepping into roles so much as just trying to really support the music and, and show our love of the music. Um, he and I get together, we, you know, we work out stuff before the show and, kind of help each other, you know, think about phrasing and, and the meaning of songs because we really want to bring the integrity um, to those songs. I mean, it, some of the best standards ever written, in my opinion. And, you know, I think there's a lot of magic um, in the songs themselves. And, of course, working with McCoy brings it to a whole nother level. The thing that's known as romance is wonderful so wonderful so they tell me do it again for another dish of the pace report i'm brian pace reporting live here at the blue note here in new york city i'd like to personally thank mccoy tyner and jose james for their time as well as the staff and management here at the blue note as always please visit my website www.thepacereport.com for my weekly column as well as my past segments until next time remember if it's in the groove it'll make you move until next time peace you are too beautiful my dear, to be true, and I'm a fool for beauty. Oh, by your feeling that because I have found you, I could have bound you too. You are too beautiful for one man
to see. Stay.